Guys, this video is loaded with a lot of information and with a lot of things where you will shake your heads and you won't be able to believe it. We'll talk about the new earthquake right away, but listen, there were some idiots that have vandalized stuff that could save their lives. We'll talk about this in this video. We will also talk about in this video about an evacuation plan for Naples that they have released that will also blow your mind if you hear the number of people that they want to evacuate. And I'm not saying more, whether that's a high number or a low number. We'll get into this as well. Then we'll talk about the situation of the people that live in Pozzoli that was directly affected by the earthquake swarm that happened a few days ago with the large earthquake. What is happening to them? How many are displaced? How many are evacuated and what's happening to their homes? Then we will talk about how the government plans to help these people and what they plan to do. And for those of you who are watching my channel about the videos about Iceland, what the government has done for the people of Grindavik, the town that was quite damaged by an eruption and earthquakes. And if you compare it to what's happened here, we will look into this. That's very, very interesting what the Italians are doing and how fast or slow they're doing it. And then we talk about some mayors of neighboring communities of Pozzoli and how angry they are. And they are quite angry. And not only the mayors, also the people that live in Pozzoli have gone to the streets, were holding up signs, and they were quite angry in the Italian way that I love so much, giving shit to authorities. We'll also talk about that. But guys, let's talk about the shaking that happened today. Italian newspapers are saying earthquake today at the Flegrean fields, Campi Flegre, shock with roar between Pozzoli and Naples at 2.06 p.m. The magnitude had, the earthquake had a magnitude of 1.7 and it was felt at the Campi Flegre area at 2 p.m. in the afternoon on Monday, May 27th. And, uh, they're saying that this seismic event was accompanied by another roar. And we've heard that in when the 4.4 happened. I've played you the video, I'll play it to you again. So listen to the sound, you hear like a zzzz, and then boof, bang, the earthquake happens. So it sounds like a missile comes flying and then hits. So that sound is part of the earthquake, has nothing to do with where the guy lives or any sounds that are connected with his apartment. So listen Listen to this here. So it seems the recent earthquake has also made some sound again, which some people think it's quite unusual. And, and overall, these earthquakes are different from the latest earthquake series that they had like this in the 1980s. So the buildings are taking way more damages than they did in the 1980s. And that's kind of weird. So the earthquakes seem to be more horizontal than up and down. Does that tell us anything about the potential eruption that might be creeping into this area? I don't know, guys. We will have to wait if the scientists have any more findings, but we know that many scientists are warning and those guys that sit there every day at the Italian Institute of Geology and Volcanology and the Vesuvius Observatory, these guys tell us Guys, prepare for the highest alert level, prepare for an eruption, because even if it's a small eruption, it could be fatal for the Naples area. Greater Naples area, more than 3 million people. Pozzoli, 80,000 people. Greater Pozzoli area, people that live right on the Calderas, right on Campi Flegri, 500,000 at least in the red zone. Here you can see a graph of the earthquake. It was relatively quiet before and then woof, that one came again. And don't think 1.7, while well, that's nothing. Don't compare it with subduction zone earthquakes that happen in other areas where they can go up to seven or six and are very, very destructive. If it's related to a volcano, volcanic earthquakes, anything above one is significant enough to be mentioned. Where did they feel this earthquake that just happened? It was especially felt in an area that's between 
Pozzoli and the eastern outskirts of Naples and particular in an area that's called Dazio and the Lungomare between Pozzoli and Bagnoli. They did locate this earthquake at a depth of 2.7 kilometers. The earthquakes in the Campi Flegrei area that stretches around 100 kilometers inside that red ring here that you see, these earthquakes are recorded by numerous seismic monitoring stations that are positioned in the caldera areas um, by the Vesuvian Observatory and the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, um, the INGV. And you see a map here with the triangles. That's are all measuring stations. And now I have to tell you something. There are people that are that stupid that they would go and vandalize these measuring stations, not understanding that this affects themselves as well, because if they are there at this location to vandalize these seismic instruments, means they are in the area, should there be a bigger earthquake or an earthquake swarm that might be an indicator that there's a potential imminent eruption. So if these instruments do not work, they cannot be warned, and then they definitely don't have a chance to get out if this volcano erupts. So they're stupid, but there's too many stupid people out there. The director of the Vesuvius Observatory, Mauro Di Vito, he had a freak out. He was so angry. He, he said, you know, it, unfortunately in this area, now we have to also witness this. These instruments are giving us fundamental data. And so he's asking for help of other institutions to prevent this, to repair them. Right now in this critical phase, that's some, I don't wanna say the name, but you know what I wanna say. I'll still call them idiots, but I wanna call them something else. Goes there and damages these stations where millions of people are at risk. A-holes, I have to say, I have to say it, guys, pardon me. So what happened? The seismic sensors that belong to the Vesuvius Observatory that have been placed at Campi Flegrei, these necessary monitoring instruments that are measuring the earthquakes and the Brady seism at Campi Flegrei, the land rise, they have been vandalized. The batteries have been stolen from these delicate machines um, it's also equipment of the INGV, of the Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology. Equipment was stolen. Um, even the seismological stations that are located at sea were damaged by boats coming in and going in the Gulf of Pozzoli. So were they damaged by intention in the water by boats or were the boats just that stupid? Um, is this a coincidence? This is super, super strange because boats are going in and out there all the time. So if this is a coincidence that boats are damaging these instruments, um, this would happen more often and then they wouldn't be so upset about this. Or you'd believe they would put big buoys or something in the water that indicates the boats must must go around this in a safety distance or something like this. Uh, so is this something planned to put these seismic instruments out of order because it's so widespread? I mean, there is some idiot that goes and says, oh, can I sell these batteries somewhere else, get some recycling fee, takes them out, but on the in the water? And it's strange. Would someone really take the time to do this? Is it worth the money? There's a lot of poor people in that area that it's hard to get by. There's not much industry. There's no good jobs. A lot of people are leaving. The younger people are leaving Naples for that reason. So, but right now, after these incidents, it raises a question mark. Let's say that. They did hold a meeting and a hearing with the Civil Protection Commission of the municipality of Naples. And of course, the director of the Vesuvius Observatory was there as well. And um, 
he he was very very upset and very saddened by this incident and he says well unfortunately in this area we also see now this the theft occurred last Friday in the Rione Terra area where the greatest upheaval was recorded. So one of the most important areas. And the battery that was stolen seems it was quite a big one. It powers the RITE station of the Vesuvian Observatory's GPS network. And it was stolen and it was later found not far away. So maybe stolen is the wrong word we, we could really say just vandalize because if someone steals the battery for the purpose of making money with it you don't find it later so it was vandalism why why is the question mark some officials say well maybe the thieves realized that they had been identified and they're also saying that a complaint has been filed in the matter so that would be good if they really know who they are the question is how did they recognize that they have been identified we maybe we will find out i'll definitely stay on the story to give you more information about this the director of Vesuvius has also given a statement to the systems that have been damaged in the sea and he was very very upset about this again um, he says the navigators of boats they pay little attention our installations our machines um, have been damaged by seaside activity by boats and even the ground stations that are in public places um, and they're not manned, right? They're damaged and there have been thefts of batteries. The director has pointed out, and he said it again, this 4.4 magnitude shock that they were experiencing there is the strongest in the last 40 years. And then he really outlined, he said, everything we do is public, even the data we collect. We don't hide anything. So for him, it's a very, very frustrating event. And for me, too. What do you think, guys? And now that everything's connected, the instruments are connected and needed in order to trigger an evacuation plan. And we've heard in my last video, if you've watched it, if not, it's in the end screen, that, you know, all the scientists are saying, the Vesuvius Observatory, the INGV, these evacuation plans that are in place right now, they don't work. They're BS. We need new ones that actually work. That's what they're saying. And they are saying we need them urgently, ASAP. And they are pointing out that there could be even higher earthquakes, but there could also be an eruption. And they're not prepared. And if you've seen my last video, it outlines how not prepared they were when the earthquake shook Pozzuoli and what happened to the residents. They have released a little bit about their evacuation plan for the city of Naples. Naples with more than 3 million people and the greater Naples area, including Pozzuoli, and it's probably even more. So basically you would think if there is a super volcanic eruption or even a smaller eruption where there are scientists that sit there in place and go out there every day and measure and look and gather data are saying that even a small eruption is devastating for Naples. You would think that the evacuation plan is for the whole area for more than 3 million people, right? But it seems not. And why? So the thing is, to evacuate more than 3 million people in a short period of time is a, is a thing of being impossible. You would need a week or something, but usually with volcanoes, you don't have that warning time. From the moment the seismic swarm is starting, depending on how far the magma needs to go, you have a few hours at best, maybe less. So. 3 million people? No way. In this city with old homes, small narrow streets and pathways, buildings will collapse, block the streets. Um, no chance. But, you know, if you live there and you hear this proposal for an evacuation plan, you know, if, that, if there's a volcanic eruption, it's not just happening for a few outskirts of Naples. It's happening for all of Naples. But 
I'll tell you what they have released today and make up your own mind. You know me. I am Italian. I am upset about, upset about this. I'm not Italian. I'm like an Italian. I feel with them. It upsets me, right? They're saying the evacuation plan for Naples in the event of an eruption of the Campi Flegre volcano will involve 350,000 and half will go to other regions. 350,000 out of more than 3 million. Boing, question mark, right? So they're saying the numbers of the Naples evacuation plan in the event of a volcanic eruption. 29 ANM, whatever that is, bus lines with 500 drivers will be there for assisted exodus. So 29 bus lines and 500 drivers. So it seems their plan is to, to drive people out with buses. Okay, that's not so stupid because if everyone takes their own car, everything will be clogged even faster. Will people really wait for the bus or will they take their own car if there's panic and you see a volcano erupt? Well, if you see the volcano erupt, it's too late anyways. But in panic, ha! Ah, I have my doubts, but let's further look further into this. It's, it's getting crazier. So they're saying the removal plan for the city of Naples due to the risk of eruption at the Campi Flegre is ready. Well, that is weird because just two days ago, we heard like three guys from the INGV and Vesuvius Observatory begging, begging the officials for an upgraded evacuation plan. And you don't do this in two days. This is quite quite a difficult task. So we heard yesterday, you saw my video probably, where the mayor of Naples said, well, we have enough evacuation plans. We need to focus on seismic upgrades of the building. We have enough evacuation plans. Yeah, but your own scientists are telling you they're BS, they're not working. They're not realistic, right? So officials are saying that this evacuation plan that they're talking about right now is a different evacuation plan um, than the one that they have for the risk of Brady seism that they're currently experiencing. Well, yeah, Brady seism is land is rising underneath Pozzoli. And of course, this is also causing these earthquakes. So they're saying that this evacuation plan that we're talking about right now concerns the eruption. They're saying the extreme case. That's the one that is currently not included in the scenarios, the extreme case. So how did they come up with this plan so quickly? So they're saying the expeditive plan, however, concerns Brady seism, the lift of the ground and the related earthquakes. And they're saying for both, you need to be prepared and have a process to follow. I fully agree, but your scientists are saying your evacuation plan for the big event is not working and you need a new one fast. That's what they're saying. What are the numbers of their Campi Flegre volcanic eruption evacuation plan? So they're saying the evacuation due to volcanic risk in the event of an emergency should involve 286,000 people in the city of Naples alone for a total of 11 neighborhoods. So they want to evacuate 11 neighborhoods, 286,000 people out of over 3 million, do the math, people. I mean, that's less than 10%. And I'll play this for you again. Their institute, their experts, the INGV, has released two simulations of a potential Campi Flegre eruption. One is more abstract, it's just basically gives, gives you an eruption in a topographic map. And the other one basically puts, um, puts it on, on like an aerial picture. So you think if Campi Flegre erupts, that only like that, that less than 10% of people of Naples will be affected and you have an evacuation plan for those and the rest of the millions of people you, what, what about them? So they'll start to drive out in panic and clog everything. Then you can forget about your bus lines. Or am I misunderstanding something here? 
I might, who knows, right? So, but they're saying again, 29 bus lines are available with 500 drivers. So 29 bus line. Am I getting this right? Each bus line has several buses for a total of 500 buses for 268,000 people. They're saying a study by the Campania region, that's the overall region that's, that's in this area, um, also predicted the numbers of those who should make use of the assisted exodus. I mean, maybe that's just my translation program. Maybe they're mean, they're, they mean exit, evacuation, because exodus is a little bit, you know what I mean, if you look at the volcano, um, it's an assisted exodus. But you know, since the experts, I'm laughing, it's a serious topic. It's really saddening me and it's concerning me. So don't get me wrong. Their scientists are saying these plants don't work and it will be fatal. So it's an assisted exodus. It is. It really is. So they're thinking that 143,000 Neapolitans will make an autonomous exodus. So they will go out by themselves. So it seems they're not even half enough buses or stuff in place for all these 350,000 people. What their study shows is that only 143,000 people will take use of the assisted exodus and 200,000 people will leave on their own. So out of over 3 million people, they have an evacuation plan in place with bus lines for 143,000 people. That's my takeaway from this. And uh, it makes me speechless again, guys. For those of you who follow my channel, whenever we talk about the Lagoonies, how we call them the Blue Lagoon in Iceland, that makes me speechless because they're using tourists as a commodity and haul them in despite the warnings of a current eruption. And they always wait until the eruption starts and then they evacuate. Although they're the place that has the magma chamber right underneath them and there's the Brady seism going on right underneath them. So, um, what are these people thinking? You know, I know it's very, very difficult for everyone involved to come up with a decent plan because whatever you do as an official might be wrong or might be wrong in the eyes of someone because technically, let's say that way, you would have to clear out the whole area and make everyone move in order to really be safe. And that's what the scientists have said, we cannot guarantee safety. So this is very, very, very concerning. But to even release an evacuation plan for only 143,000 people and make the rest of them believe that only these 11 municipalities are affected from a potential eruption, so the others should not even start to evacuate or what? This is, this is crazy and I hope that there will be some updates in the future and I really, really hope that they listen to their scientists that are begging them to come up with something better. And one of them, um, Roberto Scandone, he has said, I think back in March already, he said, if I had the resources, I would evacuate right now. That was even before the current seismic crisis. And he's right there. He's a seasoned scientist who has researched Campi Flegre and Vesuvius for decades. So you have to understand this meeting just took place on Monday, May 27th. So they really think only those people are affected. So the civil protection manager explained that the actions that have been taken by the municipality regarding the Brady seismic risk and the volcanic risk have been updated and that the distancing plan, the distancing plan for the volcanic risk has been updated. It's an evacuation plan, right? Evacuation plan. And they're saying this plan only concerns the red zone. So the red zone of Campi Flegre and the rest they think will be safe or what? And they're saying it concerns the red zone where 286,000 citizens live with 
17 waiting areas. We will start with the installation of tables in the emergency areas, which will indicate both the emergency areas related to the Brady Seism risk and the collection points for assisted evacuation in the event of volcanic risks. So they will set up these tables and plans so that everyone can look this up. Um, I would like to hear the opinion of these three scientists. We talked about them in my one of my last videos that are saying we cannot guarantee your safety. We have to prepare for the worst. And the worst is whole Naples, everything between Vesuvius and Campi Flegri and even further, more than 3 million people. So that is a plaster that doesn't help anything. I mean, distancing from the volcano, yeah, that doesn't help. So I understand now why the scientists are so confused and are saying, gosh, guys, you have to move and it's urgent. It's absolutely urgent. So what they're talking about here is this just to calm down everyone, to give the residents a false sense of security in order to not create a panic. And we've heard in Pozzuoli, Pozzuoli is quite empty right now. So many people have left to other areas to live with family. So they're not staying in the town. There's people left in the town, unfortunately, that cannot afford to leave. But people have taken matters in their own hand. And I, I think they were smart. The real estate market there has come to a halt. People don't want to buy there anymore. So, and with this evacuation plan, bus lines, guys, I'm very very worried. I love Italy. I've been in Italy so many times. I love the people there and I'm really, really concerned. And I know it is difficult. I don't know what the thing to do is, but you have to develop an evacuation plan for everyone and you have to be realistic about it. Um, we know to be totally safe, that would mean evacuate everyone leave this area, right? But is this possible? More than 3 million people? I don't know, guys. Uh, I don't have a solution for this, I'm honest. So it's easy, right, to criticize officials and, and um, if you don't come up with a better plan, but at least I think they should be somewhat honest and say, if you have a chance to find a job somewhere else and can afford to leave behind your place without compensation, maybe, I mean, they have already mentioned that there is some compensation for people that have to leave or in the direct affected areas. So they, I think they will come up with something like the natural disaster insurance in Iceland. And it sounds like that they will be a lot faster than in Iceland. It took them like six to seven months until now the first homes are being bought out by the government. It sounds like they're faster here, which is absolutely great. Maybe they don't have that much bureaucracy involved. We will have to wait down the line what exactly they're offering but you know maybe they come up with something some more incentives I mean it's tragic the area Pozzuoli and the coast of Naples it's stunningly beautiful it's a tourism area lots of people go there for vacation I mean to abandon that area and you know the problem is nothing could happen these earthquake swarms could fade away and then turn up in 10 years, in 100 years, in one year. Who knows? And then you abandon this beautiful area with all its history. It's difficult because the science is not far enough progressed to give us a definitive answer or even a time frame to say within the next five years, it'll definitely blow. No, they can't. They have to wait until it's almost ready to erupt and sometimes um, it erupts and they didn't know. So it's a difficult situation. I will keep you updated about all of that. Guys, I urge you, if you want to learn more about what's going on in beautiful Italy in this area, check out these videos here in the end screen. And we're still waiting for the eruption in Iceland, which is kind of giving us a little bit of a scratching our heads. It's not erupting yet. The magma chamber underneath the Blue Lagoon is fuller than ever. So now we're kind of speculating, will it erupt in the same area? Will it erupt inside of Rindavik, outside at Fagradalsfjall, at Eldwerp? So it's definitely 
remains very interesting in Iceland. So check out my Iceland playlists if you want to learn more about that, guys. Stay safe wherever you are. Almost all of us, we live somewhere where there we could be prone to natural disaster. And my heart goes out to all my viewers that live in the affected areas in the U.S. that have been destroyed by the tornadoes. Just recently, it's heartbreaking. And uh, I hope, guys, you're safe. And much love from me to you guys. And uh, let me hear um, right in the comments how things are going, how the help is going. Um, are you being taken care of? So thanks, guys. I'll see you very, very soon. And oh, like this video, please. And leave me a subscription if you'd like to stay on top of this and see more of me. Bye-bye.